Happy Tuesday, everybody. It's been a week. We've been uh, between getting injections put in and uh, just being busy with aircraft stuff. I haven't had a chance to be on here to do the live stream today or for the past week and stuff, past Tuesday and Thursday. But we're here today, going to have some fun doing some sketching and drawing today. Don't have the digital pad out today, so we're actually going to be doing playing with my, like I showed a couple posts, the, my sketch pad I started working on uh, from this past week. Sounds like my volume is up really loud for my music through my headphones. So let me, let me lower that a little bit. There we go. So anyway, I hope you're having a great day. I hope you had a great weekend and whatnot. So anyway, you come in. i be happy to say hey. Tell me how you're doing, what you've been up to today or this weekend and stuff. Uh, no glove today, as you can tell. I burnt my hand and stuff about a week ago and stuff, and it's still healing. So I can't put on my glove today. So we'll have to just make do and make it happen so anyway as you can see i got a little sketchbook today a little travel sketchbook i started playing with and i'll show you some of the stuff i started goofing off with in here like we started playing with some little kitty cats and stuff we did and let's see i did uh, another one where i'm playing with this 1.3 millimeter pencil uh, i did a little just a little sketch pose there another one there I uh, started playing with this. This was actually with back with my uh, 0.5, my mechanical edits. You can see it's much more thinner, much more precise. And then I'm back to the 1.3. I'm trying to, I'm trying to use a mixed piece to it. Here's the 1.3, and this is my 0.5. Um, basically, what that means is the lead. Let's see if I can put that up there to you. you. See, there's a little. That lead is a little. It's quite thicker than this 0.5. And what it does is it's good little practice. Because I notice when I'm using the 1.3, I'm actually drawing lighter, and usually when you roll the pencil and stuff, you'll start to get a point to it, to where you work on a point. But I actually am starting to draw a little bit lighter with the 1.3 to work in some of these details that are, to where I'm not focusing on so much detail, more working on the larger picture and portion of everything. So. But anywho, this is one of the pictures I'm working on right now. It probably is a little bit faded because of the way the light is. Let me see if I can adjust this out to where it's not so bright. There we go. That's a little bit better on the eyes. So, anyhow, we'll figure we're just going to dig through. We're going to do a couple of sketches. I might actually work on this a little bit. Then what we'll do is we'll just we'll play along. We'll we'll continue on through the book. Let me just open this up actually. So, and as you can tell, I'm left-handed. So. I use these things upside down. That's the front of it usually, and usually you open up like a regular book. It's almost like it's a manga. So the thicker hard back piece is back here, but I use this on the right side. So that way when I'm drawing and stuff, I'm not getting interference with the binder, or if I draw for a wider landscape, I put it at the top, and then I can work that way along with it. So whether you're left-handed or right-handed, You'll find out that this will be neat little interesting things to it, and it kind of, I guess, in skateboard terms, old skateboard terms, it'd be considered goofy footed. So, but anyway, we're just going to listen to some music, kind of relax and chill. I'm just kind of bringing in a little bit of working in some of this hair that I have, and I got a little bit of the pencil here. That I'm working on the, uh, the necklace, actually, getting some of the chain link in, and I kind of been jumping around, just making this, trying to make this work. So, but hopefully we'll have a nice, calm time. A little bit of get away from where everything's going on in the world. A little bit of any little world stress is happening to you right now. You get a little chance to just have a little bit of relax and fun time. That's what this is all about. But yeah, I find myself with this pencil a lot using a little lighter and of course I have my uh, my needed eraser and I've been using I've been using my finger instead of the rub pencil the stump so instead I've been using my finger a little bit on it I started to use this when I use this it really darkens out and brings out the like I can do it right here and I can show you it'll really start to bring out the dark because it actually starts to really spread the lead on it so but it definitely brings in some that. So when I get done with all the initial prep, I'll come back over and I'll start smoothing out some things and changing out and really increasing the values on it. So eventually this is all going to be a black background. I think I'm going to have it with a black, like almost like a black knitted sweater to where it kind of blends in with it to where you really just kind of catch some of the highlights. That's what we're going to end up playing with. 
So, but anyway, let's see if we can get make these these chains look correct. Let's see. And I'll look up here periodically to see if you guys are messaging anything on here. It's going to be kind of a relaxing day. Not too much instruction. Well, maybe if you guys decide you want something to, to play with or to try, give me a sh shoot me out. a holler there on the message board, and we'll, uh, by all means, we'll definitely can work with anything you want to have a question with or want to see how it's done. We can try it out and experiment a little bit with it. So, but right now we're working on drawing out some of these knotted areas. So, and as you can tell, it, it's not too bad when you go one way, but when you're trying to make it look realistic to where the chain runs back and forth, it kind of provides a good center. We want to bring this way. So he's going to come across this way. suggestion for us left-handed people yep it's I've done it I've kept trying and trying and trying for the longest time where I would draw the opposite direction on things and constantly this would either catch in my wrist you know or it would I would try to do a nice smooth area because even this I mean this has about mm, say about that much height of paper on it about that much height of paper on it on this side so it's kind of up a little bit higher so I, I'm floating. I'm floating my hand anyway. Let me move. I can move my cover page. I'm floating my hand anyway for when I'm trying to get nice smooth circles and roundness on it. But at the same time, this thing will cause of that. And of course, you can say, "Oh, we'll get the book type." And I've gotten the ones where it has the book binder type. But the problem is, is you have to get a really long one and not a tall one. Because if the binding is long, when you open it up and you start to work on it, it always wants to come back, and close up on you. So. By doing this, it allows you to where you can even do this where you put it off to the side and that even gets rid of a little bit of thickness on it to where it makes it a little bit easier for you to work with and you can actually spin it and you can work around that way with it. So, but, I don't know, today I just, over the weekend i been just playing around, hoping, you know, my uh, neck's feeling pretty darn good. So, and I was like, you know, Maybe I'll grab one of my little sketchbooks out of my uh, my armor or my little storage area I got over here to the right in my vast, vast pile of surplus. <laughs> I grabbed one of the small sketchbooks. I said, we'll play with this. This is it'll... Hello on YouTube right now. I'm going over to Twitch. See you there. Oh, okay. So, but today was a pretty good day. We got some work done actually you might actually no you can't see it because in the back there's what when I worked on the aircraft that's actually one of the CAD overlays that we had print out on the water jet and if you watch my Facebook or Instagram you'll see the uh, the little quick little clips I did of the process of that Let's see if we can get a little bit more depth in this hair it's a little bit everywhere so but, uh, yeah, we've been doing a little bit of uh, adjustments and a little bit of tweaking on some of the overlay stuff. Because when you use a, a water jet versus, like, a laser to cut the metal and stuff, you will get a little bit of deviation. And sometimes it doesn't. You'll get maybe a little bit of a, a, a warping, I guess you could call it. And this is going to be here for towards the back, so it's going to have a slightly darker tint. There we go. Show some depth in there with that. And you'll notice as I'm doing this, you'll see, probably not because of this 
deck, but, but you'll see that this guy slowly makes his rounds around as it keeps going. Because <laughs> as I sketch, I spin the pencil. Keeps the lead from being only angled on one side. So, there we go. And let's see. Let's see if we can get a little bit of a. This hair is going to be supposed to be like a light, lighter hair. So we're really going to have to work just only a little bit on the. Uh, use, use my finger. Get some of this. Just to kind of give it a little bit to where it looks like it shows some highlights and some shadows in it. And then it looks like it fades it out a little bit. When you do that, you just go back over and you kind of bring in a little bit of the detail back to it. And you keep adding. As you keep adding, so eventually it'll, you'll, you'll get that contrast you're looking for. I had a neat, neat project that dealt with using a Irish coffee mug for a school project where you first had to photograph it at a one to two composition which means that if you did it like you took a, a reference section piece say the base of the Irish coffee mug you had like a one inch a one inch height and then it had to be two inches wide so a one to two ratio so when you took a picture of it it had that angle well once you did that then you went into Photoshop once you had picked out the one that you liked the best on it. You went into Photoshop and then you used, you did three variations of it. And what you do is you pick three different pixel sizes for a brush. And you keep it that one pixel size. Trios. Trios. Ha. Ha. Are you saying hi, buddy? <laughs> it's okay. I do the same thing. I'll get my hand typing a little bit quick on it. How you doing today, Trio? Is it Tree OS or Tree OIS? <laughs> So anyway, welcome to the chat. Welcome to the live stream. We're just kind of relaxing, playing with a new sketchbook, playing with the larger lead, testing it out, see how what, what type of uh, type of work we can get on it. Brett, thank you for liking the stream, brother. I appreciate it, man. So, but if you guys decide you want to learn on on something, I'm just kind of, like I said, playing with this new sketchbook I started over the weekend and just kind of slowly filling the pages, trying out new things, practicing new stuff, trying different methods for stuff. Because um, if you guys watched, those who've watched before and stuff, I've used the, the Loomis method a lot for some of my artwork. And, well, I'm trying to blend, not just using only one method because you don't always get a good stylized piece that you sometimes can um and for you to know let me show you uh here we go i got a couple of his books but andrew loomis this is one is an old book as you can tell uh drawing the head and hands he's got a very simple piece to it and i'll show you real quick what i'm talking about as for good reference so let's see here let's go through it has a very simple structure, which a lot of people know, the ball. So it runs through the ball, you basically make your center points, and you start cutting it out to build up the, the head. There's a couple other methods and stuff that I've been practicing and playing with, aside from the Loomis method, even though it is a very good method to use, to try and better get the uh, muscle structure. Like in this one, I used a not a circle for it, but I actually kind of used more of just kind of shaping out the structure that I wanted and then for the eye area I did what was called the west whistle method lettuce <laughs> and uh, I kind of used the whistle method looks like a whistle like the little open area where the peanut is and a whistle lettuce tomato pickle Are we making a mayo <laughs> what are we doing trio I Are we making ourselves a recipe <laughs> I always enjoy what my daughter and I are watching. It's become a habit when we're free. Oh, very cool, man. I appreciate it, Brett. That's very nice. Yeah, we're uh, we're just kind of filling out today. Um, we'll come in and do some... Uh, if you guys decide you want to try... Or you want to ask about how to draw something, or you want to give a shot at something like that, and there's something you want to learn how to draw, we can draw it along. 
uh, anytime you want. You shoot me a message or whatnot, and I'll add it on the live stream. And um, I'll show you. You probably missed it. This is the first of the sketchbook area. And like I said at the start, like these are some things. It doesn't have to be as crazy as the other one. We can always do simple stuff like this. These are little kitty cats that I was just playing around with. Simple little designs, little charcoal cylinder, little S curve for that. And just kind of did, mapped them out. Got a little mouse and got them stuck in a cup. You know, just little stuff coming up with things. You know, just trying out also, this is another type of method, just using large shapes. Map out all your large shapes. Same thing here, mapped out large shapes that it, did more of a an egg and then basically did a rectangle for all the other pieces and started working it in so and we'll eventually get well I got to go back and work on that one I was using my thinner uh, my uh, smaller lead my 0.5 but yeah brother anytime you guys come on in and you want to say you want to try something new you want to look at it and I'm more than happy to come along with there so what we'll do what I ought to do is one day I ought to come in and just show some of my old work so you can see how why it's good to always practice and try new stuff because you can see the actual progression of some of my artwork as well so but right now we're kind of working on some of those highlights when you look at somebody's hair and stuff especially long hair, you'll see they have like a lighter tone and it kind of gets a little bit of a darker tone and it has a little bit of highlight pieces on it depending on the lighting so it's always a good thing and then we kind of just and of course, also, if it gets a little bit too muddy sometimes, or you want to get a little bit more of those highlights, you grab your kneaded eraser. You kind of just throw a couple little... Doesn't have to take, you don't have to push hard with a kneaded eraser. It'll pick up some of this, especially if you're running light. If you push hard with the pencil, it's harder to pick up and it gouges the paper. So that's another good thing. When you work with this, where you have a whole bunch of pages stacked up, it makes it a little bit softer. So you have to be a little more, more delicate. And of course, you just your needed eraser gets a little little hard you just roll it up so <laughs> I don't know who trio is but just the random words is hilarious looked like he was doing a, a grocery list at first <laughs> so anyhow let's see here and let's see what we'll work with this We're going to kind of do like a work in a little bit of a black background to this, so I'll probably go to a th even a thicker lead. I got like two millimeter ones that I can use for larger drafting stuff that I can drop down to where I can even grab a little bit heavier area and kind of fade it out. This is just, it's just getting, trying to work out how the hair would actually kind of curl. We can have a little bit of fun. What I think what we might do is we'll, maybe we'll give this one a break, maybe. How about we go to a thicker lead? Oh, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> it is. It's actually very, it's actually very interesting, especially after using like a small 0.5 for a while. And then you go to this. 1.3 and it's suddenly you got to really work a little bit more cleaner to try and get a little bit more of them sharper lines and stuff and it does work out really nice so it's a good it is a good practice piece on it and stuff and that's why i've been work focusing on this piece this uh this sketchbook trying to use this 1.3 and what a neat thing is you can don't have to just stick with the 1.3 oh hi it's brett's daughter hi brett's daughter <laughs> how are you today guys have school or gone spring break or so it's nice hearing from you thank you for hanging out with me you have an art question sure what is your art question I'm sorry I'm not looking at the camera I got my list on my one screen over here so I'm reading the text messages on or the chat messages so, once I get the question, I'll answer it for you. So, let's see. 
How do you not? How do you manage not to get smudge marks? Going to get, okay. Going to give this one away. All right. What I can do for smudge marks is, being I'm left-handed, it's why sweep constantly. As you can tell, this is actually the front of the book. I'm left-handed, so I open it backwards. This guy I keep to the right, and I usually work from right to left for a lot of the sketching area, and when I try to draw all over it, I'll rotate it to get around it. If I can't do that, I have one of these guys. This is looks it's just a glove with two little fingers on it. I use it for when I draw digitally. This is my digital one, and this is my uh, for when I do my analog, my hand drawing and stuff. It's got just a little bit of. It's about the same material. It's just that one has a little bit thicker padding on it for going uh, sliding across the screen. And yeah, the medication's dry on there. I'll put this on and I'll show you. So I do this, and that's all it is. And so when I rest my hand there. I'm not going to smudge it with this. This is a different material. If you don't have one of these, this piece of paper is the, be uh, the next best thing. You can take it if you got a small area. You can take this and it's just, just printer paper. You take that and you go, I want to work there. So what you do is you lay it down first and then you just kind of work off of that and you slide up and down on this. That way, this keeps that from smudging. Now a neat thing is smudges do come up and they do happen. This little guy is a kneaded eraser. He looks kind of funny because typically they look like this. This is a fiber castle box that has a little kneaded eraser on it. It's very, it feels like Play-Doh. You know, you can shape it, mold it, push it around wherever you want to. And matter of fact, when it starts to get a little dark, you knead this sucker up. And then you make it into the shape you want. I typically will do this because I can put it in my hand and I can kind of make a little bit of a point where if I want to get in tight on an area, I can actually get in tight and I can clean up a line. Or if I need to do something heavy on it, or if I've just got my, like down here, you can see, I'll show you. Down here, I have like my little construction lines here for the necklace pendant. If I take this and I just kind of roll it over it, it lightens it out. Okay, so and as you can see, it's actually written, it's actually transferred over on that way. Well, it looks like he's doing Russian now. <laughs> so, anyhow, but this is how I do it. I was wondering that that was. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Not a problem. Yeah, these guys are not, they're not expensive, and I like them a lot better than. I've, I've used these for a long time too. These are poly polymer, high polymer erasers. And they're okay for colored pencils and whatnot, as you can see, if you're trying to hit some colored pencils. But the needed erasers, they last forever in a day. I mean, this one, I have one here. Uh, I've had one that's literally, it has a, it's still in its box. I haven't gone through, gotten to it yet through all the rest of them. And it has like a 1976 package on it. And it's still, you can knead it up and work on it. And they're, they're not expensive at all. They're really nice. And you just get yourself a little zippy bag if you're going to travel around with it, throw it inside there. And when I'm playing with it, I put it there. That way it keeps all the stu keeps stuff out of it. But that's all there is to that. And sometimes you're going to get, when you've got to put your hand on it, you don't have, say you don't have a piece of paper. I just kind of try to do like this, and then I hit a little bit, and then I move my hand away and not try to slide it. So... But that was a very good question. I'm glad you asked that. So, you have a favorite cartoon character or something you like? You do draw yourself. <laughs> silly eraser, yes. Yes, it can be a silly eraser. <laughs> But yeah, is there some is there a particular character you like, Brett's daughter? Somebody that you always want to try and draw or or did you draw on a regular basis already with? Okay, let's do that. 
I like different types of anime shows. Oh, you like to draw some anime characters, huh? Some characters, cool. Is there any particular anime you like? Are you a One Piece fan? That's the biggest big thing going on around right now. Or are you a yeah, I guess it'd be called MHA, a My Hero Academia. Let's see. Or if you have Netflix, I think Netflix has the that Comey Can't Communicate one. That was a cute one too. That's another cute anime or manga. So you like My Hero Academia. Oh. Let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. You have. I woke up in a new Bugatti. Okay. Very cool. Let me. All my computer compiles. I've done a couple of My Hero Academia characters already. I've drawn a couple of them already, but let me see. Whoops, that was the wrong section. Let's see. Let me flip on down through here and see. I don't know if I have any of mine scanned where you can see them, but maybe, maybe we'll do a... Let's go here. See. Yeah, who's your ca favorite character on My Hero? You know, it, uh, you like like Uchaka Uraka or uh, see if I can remember the names. I haven't drawn them in a while though. Hmm. Oh, and Demon Slayer. Oh, okay. Oh. You like Uchaka, Uraka, okay, let's see. I've done her a couple of times before. I actually did one where, let's see here. Well, maybe we'll just turn the page and we will try this out. Uchaka, Uraka, yep. Let's see here. It's been a bit. It's been a minute. <laughs> I have to see where they went off to. I thought I had them. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I have a ton of reference stuff that I've used. So I was just, it might be easier for me just to do a quick search on it again to find some of my uh, model sheets. Because I actually have the model sheets for them. So, I love to get a hold of the model sheets. <laughs> Let's see. I probably have it underneath its Japanese title, which is what most of my stuff are, like Kimitsu no Yaiba, which is Demon Slayer. Let's see. Maybe we can, uh... Yeah. Let's see here. Maybe we'll just kind of do a little... Let's do, a, let's do a little sketch session. We'll use a Chaco. So let's see here. Kind of keep it stylized. We'll... I'm laying out like a perspective line. So this one from here to here is this is going to be a little bit longer, a little bit wider. So that's basically all I'm doing is just kind of getting the layout, laying the head out. Seeing how the head sits because here's going to be the jaw line. About here. So we'll have this will be the eye area. Okay. 
So what we'll do is we'll give, we got that, we'll give her a little shoulder blade area. sketch this out kind of quickly. So. Of course we're going to have shoulder blade and a shoulder blade there. And you notice when I'm sketching this it's just you, you're kind of keeping it loose. You don't have to really got the head. Give her, she's got a hat, that, that battle helmet she wears. Comes out about like that. Yeah, let's see here. Let's run that out a little bit longer. Give a little bit more of an extension on it. I think she has sort of like a back brace. I'm trying, I'm looking at a couple of reference pictures to see what it looks like from different angles to try and get a layout of this. It's always good to use reference images, especially if you're working on a piece that you're, you know, be it a bird or whatnot. So, let's see here. So we'll have that, and then of course we want to give her her little, her little shield dome, which will be, will come down about here, and we'll run it from there to there, and of course we want to bring this over. Make it look like it's got a slight bend in it to where it kind of looks like it rolls around her face. And of course we will give her hair. You notice I draw over the top of the existing lines. Don't try to draw behind if you're going to do a whole sweep. Lost the drives on Facebook, switch to YouTube. Yeah, they, they, it sometimes that gets a little finicky. A couple, about a month ago, it was Twitch kept dropping off. So... I might actually, I might actually see what what new things they have for new places. So, but that's okay. Let's see here. We'll hit this up. Give her a little hair piece. She kind of runs her hair kind of runs this way for her bangs. Got a little bit, but shows over that way. And we gotta simulate her other hair that runs on the front like that. So, like I said, we're just fleshing out the character right now. chest area, this is the rib cage area, and this is where the breasts will be. For your chest. Because you don't want them up too high because they're not up here. You know, they don't run up here and of course, you know, they're not down in your stomach. So you want to sit and sit and look correctly. So we'll run it up. It kind of has like a little design that kind of runs down a uniform. Let's uh Let's go ahead and see. Maybe we'll get some, put some arms in here. Bottom of the rib cage, elbow. Elbow goes down to the bottom, right, right to the rib cage area. So that's a good reference point for you to remember. And of course, we will do a little bit of foreshortening. So we'll put, yeah, we'll put the hands like this. Make the hand a little bit bigger. We'll kind of foreshortening. Also, if you don't know, is where. When you like Spider-Man is the easiest way, where he'd always have his hand really big and the arm kind of it it looks shorter that way, but it's much larger and it scales back. So that's we're doing a little bit of that right here. So we will run it this way.
eyebrows, actually those eyebrows might be a little bit thick for her, thin them out a little bit. Okay. And now, what's neat is we got the basically all these construction lines as you can see. So what we'll do is we'll take this and it's going to look a little bit lighter now because we're going to take it and we're going to go and we're just going to mat down on it. By matting down on it, it picks up some of it and it gives us, leaves us our construction lines a little bit lighter so we can do a nice little cleanup. See? So it looks dirty now like that. As you can tell in there, but then what you do is you just kind of work it through and blend it in and you get it set up for the next time. See? So now that we got that, we have our basic out sketch. So now we can actually come back and now we'll come back and we'll do a little bit of cleanup to it. So and it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be perfectly clean. You can still you can work over it and over it and over it again. Chuck is pretty neat because she actually doesn't have like crazy like eyelashes and stuff. I think if she does anything, she has like the little two that do that. <laughs> I think that's what most of the little stylized piece of that is that she has too. So take this. This is a little bit high, so we're going to actually bring this down a little bit. We're going to drop them down, get a little bit more of that face. Yeah, that looks better. set that way and now we can actually go and look at this. This is kind of neat because this band kind of helps you bring in that believability of more 3D that she's got some depth and perspective to her instead of just a flat piece or a flat section. glass we don't want the glass to be too thick and heavy so I'm lightly kind of I'm rotating trying to keep a little sharp edge or an angle to where it's not such a thick line as like the actual face because it is like a little bit of a glass feel to it there we go so we have that and of course we want it to look to make it look three-dimensional we're actually going to give the way it curves over here a little bit, and we're going to make it 
so ever so light in there. So I'll pop it up here so you can get a closer look. So you see, that way. And we'll just keep playing with this. And it's okay if you don't get it right the first time. That's what you got an eraser for. You can just work back into it. So don't be afraid to erase if you have to. So. Concern. She's got to fight. Okay. We'll take where the neckline runs. We'll kind of give this a nice little smoothed out piece. There we go. And we've got the neck that runs down to here. So we'll be able to get the other side. Important part of doing the construction line, so everything feels like it matches with all the, uh, with the, your shoulder for, for making the character feel like they actually got some weight to them and depth. And all we're doing now is we're kind of putting in some of this, because it's, it's essentially a bodysuit that she wears. And what we're doing right now is we're just kind of giving it proper little angles and curves and stuff to where it feels like it's really, really on there, like it's actually wrapped, not like just painted on to the front. So. some shape would give it like a little bit of a curve I can't remember is it two I think there's three one two yeah three you love it cool well this is a, this is just how you, you map them out and stuff and I all I got is I have on this screen to the right of me is I have just basically all sorts of reference pictures of her different angles and whatnot like that so we're going to just Map her out, piece her out. That's all there is to it. I actually have some sketches of a long time I did of them where uh, they were like at, in the dorm room at school. And they were all like hanging out and just not like in their action uniform, but they're just like hanging out doing what they usually would do, studying and whatnot. So, which was a neat little, little piece. I have to find that and I'll, if I do, I'll post it. And, when you guys are up, I'll show it for you. There we go. We'll clean up some of those. Oh, I've got to remember to put her... Uh... Her other piece for her hair. There we go. There we go. That's 
about close to the same height. You see how this the same angle is? Showing a little bit of perspective piece to it. Like this. Like the shoulders, the hair is the same, the eyes are about the same. It's got a slightly smaller section. What I might actually do is I might actually clean this up to make it look like her cheek is a little bit there, a little bit more, you see. Take just a little bit of that tail off. And now it kind of has a nice, better, cleaner line to it, to where it feels correct. Okay. And she's got those, like, I think she has those, like, those little ball-looking orb things that go around her, her hand. So let's see if we can, uh... Hands. Everybody freaks out about hands. They're tough. Oh my god. Yeah, they can be tough, especially when you're looking for a stylized a stylized layout for some people. If you're doing them to where they look a little realistic, it's not so bad. So, she's kind of like a... Let's run this, and then we'll give her a thumb. Ooh. This will be one, two, three, four fingers. We got them all. <laughs> lines and let's see yeah they're like little balls is what they got so maybe we'll kind of give it a little kind of run around like so and which way they kind of so they'll have, a, they have like this little handle looks like. Got the little hinge portion. So you run this straight down here and you figure over here's the other hinge. So all we're doing is we're kind of just line up, working it out. There we go. Alright, so we got that. We'll give some we can give it sort of like a little curve, like a little glistening curve to it. Right. And let's see here. This kind of blends in because it's, this is black, that's black. So we'll, let's give this a little bit more. What we might actually do is we might actually kind of go hybrid with this instead of just sticking with the 1.3 millimeter. What we can do is we can put that guy down go over here to a 0.5 when we want to get a little bit more tighter details. We can actually use him get some of these tighter details in, which typically wouldn't see. Now another thing that's great is I'll show you, I got over here off to the side, this little guy. This is an electric eraser. You get different type nib sizes and what it does is it basically spins this tip here nice and quickly. And if it gets dirty, you use your side of your fingernail and you clean it off to where it's clean again. And what you can do is you can use it if you want to get into a real tight area like so, in between two lines you already laid. It's another neat little tool that you can have that can help out. And what we'll do is we'll actually like that, that way it cleans up. And Right here, you see all the eraser stuff? That's what happens when you use something other than a needed eraser. You get these little little squigglies that are on there. That's why you use this a brush instead of your hand, because your hand will make it smudge. So a nice little brush. You know, this is a, God, this is an age-old Pacific Arc one. I think it's like 40 some odd years old. But they make them still, and they work great. Great little tools. So, let's see here. And I have my lead out, as we put this so you can see. You see the lead, how close. There we go, that way you get a little bit better shot of it. You see, I got actually got about two millimeters sticking out of that lead, instead of it being so close to the metal shaft. And what that does is, yeah, if you're not used to it, it can break easily, but this also helps train you to not work so hard on the, pe on the page. And you can kinda go back and forth. Especially with this, because you're not really inking or anything. You're just kind of still sketching out the pieces. So, move this off to the side so I can rotate this. You'll find when I rotate, 
when I'm trying to work an arc or an angle, I'll always put the angle to where it matches your wrist. Because you can do an angle this way with the wrist, or you can use the whole hand and get that same angle. So let's do that, and then let's see if we can, can run this guy out. Clean up the construction lines there. This will be like a little reflection piece to where you can see a little bit of, if we decide to draw, color it in or if we shade it in later we can know we can drop this down to where it has a little bit of a glossy look to it. Okay, so we got that. Let's see here. Got need an interesting little design layout for the shoot and everything. And here we have the 0.5 as you can see, it's so definitely tighter. Interesting. Yep. So. And uh, we got those tight, tight details out. We can go back to the 1.3. Let's see here. Now we kind of have a little quick block out area of the of the hand. So we kind of have the knuckle area idea right here. So and you got to remember when you look at your hand, you always seem to have like this. It's not they're not going to be just completely straight lined up, you know. You know they're going to have like this one's raised, that one's not. You, they got a, a little bit of a variation to them, or they got like you when you're holding something, this finger, your 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 index finger, your point six, it, it really. Uh, it kind of sticks out a little bit. So it kind of feels a little bit more natural that way. So when you'd actually draw them, you'd actually have one that's maybe a little bit raised, a little bit higher than it would be in a normal fist. And you can kind of take it the same way as they come across. And of course, it's not they're not going to be flat. It's going to have a little bit of a roll to it. Let me do it like that way so you can see. So you kind of just they can be a little, it can be a little bit daunting trying to draw these little sausages <laughs> that we have as fingers. And, so, and it can be a little bit intimidating, but don't worry about it. It's not, it's not that bad. Just got to remember, it's not, they're not complete boxes. So as long as you remember they're not boxes, be good to go. Earth them over that way. And let's see here. We Sort of, I think she sort of had like a little bit of a black section, so let's kind of thicken this out to where it looks like you actually have a hollow for that. So we'll do the same thing here a little bit. That way it doesn't look like it's a glove, but... It, and let's see here, we want to kind of... Kind of laying out a ball area that we want. Remember, I remember when I first saw her, uh, your daddy will, rec will know when I say it. It kind of makes me think of Mega Man gloves. You know, we had a character back in the day that we used to play video games with all the time that was called Mega Man. And he always had this big old, like, ball on the end of it that was sort of like the same, similar same thing. Kind of neat. It's got a little bit of nostalgia to it. Okay, so we got that. Now what we can do is as we're playing that in, what we do is we come over here and take a little break from that area and we can actually, we just use the pencil and we'll just kind of ping in some depth to our character. So, because I don't foresee I'm going to be color penciling any of this stuff or not. What I do need to do is I need, need, need to pull my color pencils back out and do some work again on like what I, what I was doing like around Christmas time and before that where I was working on uh, doing some color theory pieces. So let's go ahead and get this penciled in for her suit. That will give a little, bit, a little more depth to it. And any time if you decide you want to draw along, by all means draw along. And if you look, get done with it, I always encourage people to send them to me. You can either shoot to me through my like I said, the Facebook or on a message area and whatnot. And we will, there we go. 
And if you want, I can post it on here for next next week's live stream and show what, what everybody's been working on. It's always a good thing to do that. You should be proud of all your work. Everything you do, you should be proud of because you put some time and effort into it. Some people think it may not be that great, but hey, they didn't put the time and effort in it. They didn't work on it. They're not having the fun and joy with it. Now, I see when I use my this rub pencil or stump or tortillion, depending on whatever way you want to use for it, or it's basically a Japanese paper roll pencil, you can use it to, to really even out and you can actually darken out and make your, it even look a little bit more richer. The nice thing is you can actually get tight up on areas with this as well. So clean up some of the little pores and stuff because this paper that's on the sketch pad is it's not like Bristol paper we're well, not like Bristol board Bristol board is very smooth like this as you this is a colored pencil piece that I was work I was working on Christmas time but it's much smoother it doesn't have a lot of pores to it so Doing this can help clean that up. Get a little shot there and there. And what we can do also is we can use this to bring in some of our shadows. So what I'll do is I'll use my electric eraser and I can clean up some of those construction lines that are left behind. So yeah, we'll do that. Just amazed how quick you did all that and how good it looks. Well, it takes a little bit of practice. And like I said, if you lay down your foundation first, you lay down, what I mean by foundation, your construction lines. You lay down all of your 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 character first. You get them laid out instead of focusing on little details. Because I had the same problem when I first started drawing myself. I always wanted to focus on the sharp details and your favorite points of of the character. You're always like, oh, wow. And, or, if you know, when you did draw stuff, everybody wanted to focus on the eyes. So, but if you lay out first the main portion of it, and you get the, the actual position down and all everything in, in the proportions that it needs first, then go back over, it does end up going kind of quick. Now, I just have had quite a bit of time practicing. Hi, Lily. My doggo's running around. All right. <laughs> Seeing what we're up to. There we go. And as you can tell, the only problem with this or electric racer, especially with this type of thickness, is you get these little that don't want to leave. <laughs> little little eraser spuds. And you want to try and touch it with your hand, but if you do, you're going to smudge it. Now what's neat is when you do, say if you do something like this a lot and you want to keep it preserved, they got some clear like spray stuff you can spray on the paper and it'll, it might give it, a, some, some of it can give it a little bit of yellowing depending on how much oils are on the paper, but it'll keep the, the pencil and stuff down on it. But now that we got that cleaned up, I'm going to take, as you can see, I'm going to take some of this tip, it's black on there from some of the existing lead that I've used. I'm actually going to use it just to kind of push up. To give a little bit of these shadows and these highlights in here and what I can do is I can actually do it with her hair too just where you can actually see a little bit more depth with the hair bring it down here so that way it uses a different tone to it now what's really neat is what we'll do is we'll give it even a lighter tone for the hair that's through the glass so it looks like it's a little bit faded out That'll make it look really slick. So you go like that. So, but you got to practice. You got to play with it. Now I'll give it a little bit closer piece to where you guys can kind of see. Oops. Drop. Almost dropped the pencil. That way, because it probably has a little bit of a glare. There we go. It's not going to be too bad. But as you can see, that's what you do with it. So. And you can always just, when you're doing, when you're doing this, you can always just keep going, play with it. Don't worry, don't be afraid to 
don't be afraid that you might mess it up. Just know that you're going to get the piece done. And that's all there is to it. Now you see, even though I used the rub pencil and it kind of blurred out or kind of lost some of the sharp, the crispness to it, you can go back over again. And you can darken, re-bring re in those, those nice values and stuff to it. And now you're giving yourself some more depth as you keep going. Okay, let's get this... Uh, This is the fun stuff. See, I'm working on making it to where this is my, will be my regular thing instead of, as my, I love draw, play, working on airplanes. I mean, don't get me wrong, if you watch my, my, my feed, what I drop stuff in the morning and what I'm working on and whatnot, I love working on airplanes. I love making them work. I love working on the electronic stuff. It's like a really fun thing for me. But if I had a choice of what I could would rather do for a living all the time, would be this. So I'm working on it. Eventually, I'll come up with something that where I will be doing this. So, and good news is I just got back from the paperwork. So my business for Lumpicum Arts is now officially an LLC. I just got the paperwork back today. So yay me! So I should be uh, making some neat little merchandise stuff soon. At least to get some business stuff out for that. So, and I'll let you guys know once I get it and where I'm going to drop it. I got to get my website put together now. I have all that. All right. But yeah, it looks like we got a nice little, nice little bust picture of Ochaka Uraka from My Hero Academia, which is a very good. It's a very good anime. Very good piece. I, I like it a lot. My my little girls watched it. Okay, let's see here. Maybe we'll... Let's see what we want to play with next. Oh, thank you, Frontier Man. Yeah. Yeah, it was a pretty good... Big, pretty big step. It was, for a long time, it was just solo meal without the LLC for many years with it. So, let's see. They got to use the classic picture. Let's see. Yeah, there's the classic face of Ochaka. Maybe we'll do an Ochaka face right here. And everybody thinks, when they see it, they think it's a ball all the time, but it looks really from straight on her head, really kind of is more like an egg. And not a long egg, kind of has a nice little wide, white shape to it. So, and what kind of trigger, what, what kind of makes that feel is the way her hair kind of runs out, because her hair kind of runs a little bit wider and it kind of comes up and it's got a nice little it's got like a got a little bit of a frosh type hairstyle so but this is a neat neat little style that I kind of worked with uh, that I started working with especially I'm trying to remember the kid the guy I was working I was going, the book I was looking at that kind of showed this other type of method and it's always cool because you can work with the larger pieces first so where are we at? We're at 8 o'clock. Huh. Yeah, we spent about half hour, 45 minutes on it. Ain't bad. So what we do is we're just kind of getting everything laid out. We're kind of piecing out how her bangs are going to look. We've got a stylized neck. So it's a small neck. So I do that. And of course, they have a lot of detail because it looks almost like a gear, which is her piece that goes around at the base for her suit around her neck but we're not going to put all that detail in right now we're just going to work on the basic shape of it this is what I was talking about getting getting the proportion out we're just kind of doing like a, a thick stop sign around her neck right now instead of trying to focus on the gear going in and out in and out we're, we want to just get the main concept of the character out little bit of a stylized eyes. The anime eyes are large like that. They usually have like a little, from the front there's usually like a little dot for the nose and then between, halfway between the two is typically the mouth area. Okay? So, and let's see here. We won't work, 
we won't do much of a bust area. We'll just kind of work on the face area and stuff on that. Maybe we'll give just like a little shoulder look to it, make it look like she's got her arms up a little bit high. There we go. And let's see here. This, this kind of looks a little bit more like the actual anime. The, this will be more of kind of like the manga style, like if you actually manga style, if you see it like in like one of the manga books, if you read it, it it's got a little bit of a different style to it, mainly because it uh, you can have a more detail on it for, you know, the animes are very detailed as it is. That's what's the greatest thing about animes as they were, you know, because they had very rich detail on things. But there we go that to lighten out our construction lines and then we'll go back over so what this will allow me to do is kind of she almost has a little bit of a crazed look when she gets because she's very Let's see how well this one shows up this one might not turn out too well which would be a good thing if it doesn't because it'll show you that even somebody who's done this a lot of times, like myself, can still even mess it up. <laughs> but we just keep working at it. And we'll get it straight. It may not come out right the first time. She's got the little eyebrows. She's really intense on it, so we're going to bring it in. Let's see. This is... Got the stylized pointy chin for the, for the mangas. Let's give this a little bit shorter of a piece to it. Like she's really got her head down more on it. lighten that up in a moment so that way we can just focus on we'll shade shadow those in but we're just kind of laying them out for the moment right now so it looks a little funny at the moment and let's see here see two different art styles of Ochako Uraka. Got the anime looking one, and then you have the manga one that sometimes looks a little bit grittier. If I remember right, I think they started doing a lot of more of the digital processing for the anime work. Look like, so. Digital's gonna have a nice, clean, smooth feel to it. This will be very. Draw the eyes like they're folk, like if they're looking at you. Give them a little bit of a little bit of a cross-eyed look, a slight. Don't put them directly in the center because that's sort of like the deer in headlights, like they're just off, like lost and not even staring at it, like they're like they're not even thinking of anything or anything. So they're no focus whatsoever. So your eyes naturally have a. focus not just kind of like just be stuck out and here's the 
classic little two, uh, two eyelashes. And then down here, it's literally just like two little eyelashes on the bottom. And we have, let's go to the 0.5 to get the detail of the anime eyes. The anime eyes are always super detailed. They usually have like a little open glare spot down there and then they'll have an open spot here. They got the pupil that runs in with it. Got a little bit of shading that guns through. And they don't really, they only have like a little bit of coloring usually that runs for the other part. So you really don't see much of the, any indentions of the inner line. And then we, here we can do about the same thing. We can. Similar, the similar piece for the the eye where it has a little clear spot there, a little reflective area there, because it's you know the eye sort of has like a little glassy look to it. And what we can do is if you darken it enough, you can use this even if you kind of go in where you want your, your clear spot, you can actually clear it out a little bit if you accidentally fill it in too tightly. So you can actually do that, and then we can clean up some of the construction lines in there. Where it doesn't look so like she's got eyeliner all around her eye. We got that. And you see how I have the dot a little bit low? The dot actually needs to be a little bit higher. Especially with the nose for manga eyes. The nose doesn't usually sit down that low. As you can see up here, it's this even though the head's tilted a little bit, you're kind of looking up at her. So the nose is a little bit up, but right here the nose is usually almost on along the bottom of the eye line. You see how much cleaner that feels? Feels like it's supposed to be there now. They usually don't put too much on the actual manga section, so let's do this and let's see if we can work that, that mouth a little bit better. Here we go. And while we're at it, we'll lighten out the uh, some of the other construction lines that we have sort of like for the head. We'll just kind of run that through. There we go. Working my needed eraser up. There we go. And what we'll do is we'll, because she's got little eyebrows, we're going to give her a little bit of, give those eyebrows a little bit thinner, but not so not so bulky. Here we go. And we'll give this a little bit more of a gentle curve to it. Does it we should have, because she doesn't have a strong, she's not like a masculine face. So, there we are. And what we can do now is we'll grab this, my rub pencil. It's got some light on it and we'll just kind of give those little circles now for her cheeks. Just a little bit right there and there. So, just working on more of a different angle of the face. We're not really hitting too much on the uh, on the rest of the body and stuff. Just kind of doing a little, it's almost like you're doing like a little reference study. We'll clean up some of these construction lines up in here. And around the side here, I'll clean that up. Grab the brush. And let's we'll continue on. Okay. Now we can do the gear. out and as it comes 
up, it's going to do the same thing to the bag. Also, thank you for all the advice. I'm probably going to go beg my dad for one of those gloves. They're not that expensive. They're literally, I think you can get like a two or three pack on Amazon for like six bucks. And they'll last for forever and a day. I usually wear them. I'm just not because like I said, I have a burn mark that I had medicine on. So I don't really want to wear it too long. But I usually do. And they're a great little, it's a great little device. So there's her little choker piece. We can even give her one of her, I can look like a bust area to where you can actually see a little bit of her suit. Kind of give it a little fill in. A little bit of a fill in there. Take this guy. We'll, actually, no. We'll stick with the 1.3. Don't have to go crazy with it. We'll just kind of darken it in. You see how at first it didn't feel like it was going to come out to anything. <laughs> it's a little bit hesitant. You just keep working on it. Didn't feel like it was going to make it look look like her at first. So, but have faith. Faith, believe in it, and you'll be just fine. And let's take this and let's add in a little bit of a for the hair. I hold this a little bit different than I do like my regular pencil when I do it because I'm not trying for too much detail. Give a little bit of a light highlight on the top to where it looks like her hair is. And then the hair in the back there will darken that out a little bit to where it's got some depth. And we can even give her a little bit of shadowing like underneath her neck. So for that, and let's just hit that. And, that. and there we are. So let's see. Go ahead and we'll. sharing with me your character that you like that so that way I can show you a simple way where we can work with it and let me make sure we don't have any eraser yuckies perfect added it to the sketchbook so that's now officially in this sketchbook and we did it with using the 1.3 so let's see if we can get this guy this girl finished out hair on this side done up. Let's see here. I was thinking maybe about trying to see, I don't know, maybe I was thinking about maybe doing an Indian type girl also like this. You know, this type of style where I kind of work it in. This one's kind of like has your cheeks puffed out, kind of like making a Making a little bit of a face, kind of a little bit of a playfulness to it. And I'm just kind of trying to figure out how the hair would kind of roll and lay out. There's no exact science to it other than just kind of visualizing how hair would usually curl or. And of course, where there'll be some gaps in it. So we'll put a little bit of gaps in there to where you can. Gap as well. We're gonna give the we'll give her a darker background behind her. That's gonna because she's got like a light colored hair. So we'll we'll do that and then we can. Awesome. Yes, very awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. So do this. And really, by doing this, we can just keep building on it. So don't ever want to. It's a neat practice that I learned from one of my classes that I had in college for graphic design called additive, additive and subtraction type drawing. 
So you would draw in and you would use a kneaded eraser to remove some of it and you would add in, remove out, add in, remove out to where you came up to the piece that you want. And that's all I'm doing with this right now is I add in, take out a little bit if I need to, add in, you know, until I get the composition that I'm looking for. So let's see if we can we'll go to my finger here because I want, don't want it to be so detailed. I'm really going to look at somehow the uh, the hair is going to flow. So we're going to have like a light spot here for like the highlight. This will be the shadow. This will be a shadow. And then we'll have a little bit of a shadow in here. So all I'm doing is using my pinky. And just kind of do this afterwards and off it goes. Now what's neat is I can now that I got that I can take some of this really kind of bring in some of the lines that I want to have that are going to really come through for like the main portion of it. I'm not trying to draw every single hair. I'm just trying to get a basis of it and bring in some of the really tight areas. Facebook is having a problem. Yeah, I'm going to go now. I hope you have a good night. Bye. Well, thank you for hanging out with me uh, and with Brett's daughter. I hope you have a great night too. God bless. And uh, if again, we'll see you Thursday. You take care and you have a good night. Okay. Yeah, it, uh, it does feel like it's uh, Facebook is the night tonight for having issues. It's going to be Facebook's night. <laughs> it happens. Just plug along. That's the reason why I got it on multi-streams. You do multi-streams. If one's not working up to par tonight, you, know, you just kind of go over to the next one. leave this a little bit of a texture still not smooth it out completely around here because this is sort of going to be like a sweater to her but what I can do is to make the uh, chain look a little bit pop a little bit more as I can take some areas the electric eraser and I can give it a little bit of a lighter contrast to it to make it stick out more
two millimeter for these. I have returned from my hiatus. Cool. My, were you here when we did? The, somebody was talking about one of their characters was Ochako Araka, so we were played. We did that for a sketch also. So we did that one. Now we're back on to this one again. So, but welcome back. We might be going a little bit early tonight. So, probably maybe in a few minutes, just kind of doing a little bit of work on this and might call it a night. I do have quite a bit of stuff I do have to get playing with in the morning. I got to actually do some refinements on this CAD piece that I was working on for the aircraft. And actually, what I can do is I can show it to you guys actually before we close up. Chop my other thing that I do besides artwork. <laughs> I'll give you, give you a little showing of what it looks like. So, just doing some cleanup and refinement work on it before we send it off to powder coat because I think we're going to send it off to powder coat tomorrow. See if the guys will let me film so I can add it to my thing for what we'll play with tomorrow. Sort of like what we did with the uh, if you watch my my Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok videos, I didn't put it on you. I haven't I haven't done much going putting on my aircraft stuff on the YouTube lately. I need to get a little bit better at doing that. But uh, we I was did a little quick. The guys there didn't mind doing a quick video of the uh, CNC machine couple on going through the process of cutting it. Eighth inch thick aluminum. It's nice. Nice. Uh, water jet machine to have. Give me one second, I'll uh, turn off the mic so I don't blast you guys. I'm going to grab the piece. Side so I don't damage any. Show you a little bit something different from the art from the art stuff. This is something I've been working on. This is for a client's aircraft. So this is a CAD piece that I worked on. I did up in CAD, and let me see if I can, might not see it too well. But this is basically an area that we're doing for an instrument piece that goes on for for the basically the cover panel for the aircraft. So we're going to have a this. Uh, flat display it's a G500 display we'll have a, the airspeed we'll have a digital altitude turn coordinator and this will be a nav con area and this will be for circuit breakers and we did I did this all up in on the Autodesk CAD program that's a cover plate that will be for the yoke coming out of the aircraft so but just had to do some cleanup some smoothing out of some of the areas so that way everything fits nicely and then they'll go off the powder coat which will be a nice black and then we'll take it to the laser engraver to where they'll put all the markings for like what each breaker does and all, any of the placards and stuff on it but a little tiny thing that we did and of course this is eighth inch thick as you can see aluminum and it actually took about mm, the water jet machine took about eight nine minutes to cut all this out which is actually pretty impressive and stuff on that they go through eight through eighth inch thick uh, aluminum t3 aluminum so anyway guys uh, we'll call it a little cool call it a little bit early tonight so thanks for hanging out with me this beautiful tuesday night i'm sorry i missed you last week but i was getting injections done up for uh, prp injections in the neck and whatnot and it's working out great so those of you that were messaging me earlier about all that stuff i appreciate it and it was very nice of you so anyway i hope you have yourself a good night have a great wednesday and I'll see you guys on Thursday. God bless. And don't forget, let's create.